Hello everybody, this video is on mirrors and lenses. Before we delve into different types of mirrors and lenses, it's important to discuss different models of light. In year 11, in the module on waves and thermodynamics, we specifically focus on the ray model of light, as this helps us understand most of the basic behaviours of light as a wave. But it's important to realise that there are more than one model of light which can be correct and therefore are frequently used in the field of physics. Here I have listed the models of light that you will learn in year 12 in the module The Nature of Light. The ray model of light is useful to demonstrate optics, that is the behaviour of light as single rays and how they undergo reflection and refraction in mirrors and lenses respectively. The ray model of light is also useful to demonstrate the effect of Snell's law during refraction as well as the phenomena of dispersion when light passes through a glass prism. A distinction must be made between mirrors and lenses. Mirrors are materials that will reflect light. This includes plain mirrors or flat mirrors, concave and convex mirrors. In contrast, lenses are materials that will allow light to travel through and therefore refract light. This includes concave and convex lenses. In the ray model of light, Light is represented as a single line, which demonstrates its direction of propagation. This is useful to highlight the reflection of light. In reflection, the incident light wave or light ray will travel towards the interface between two medium and bounce off the surface between the two medium. In the law of reflection, it states that the angle of incidence, that is the angle the incident light ray makes with the normal drawn from the surface, should be equal to the angle of reflection, which is the angle between the normal and the reflected light ray. So you can see here, by drawing and representing light wave as a single ray, it is much easier for us to visualize the law of reflection. The law of reflection are also obeyed when light reflects off concave and convex mirrors. A concave mirror is one where the mirror surface is caved inward, and a convex mirror is where the mirror surface bulges outward. Both concave and convex mirrors can be modelled and drawn as an arc of a bigger circle. In optics, there are a few terms and features that we must first introduce before we delve into concave and convex mirrors individually. The principal axis is a straight line that passes through the centre of the circle, as was the focus of the mirror. This should be in the middle of the concave mirror as well as a convex mirror. The centre, of course, refers to the centre of the circle that we are modelling the concave and convex mirror of. The focus of the concave mirror is the halfway point between the concave mirror and centre, and for concave mirrors, the focus lies in front of the mirror. For convex mirrors, the focus and the center are both behind the mirror, but the focus is still the halfway point between the mirror and the center. The term focal length refers to the distance between the focus and the mirror. So in this case, the focal length is in front of the concave mirror, and the focal length is behind the convex mirror. Concave mirrors are what we call converging mirrors because when the light rays reach the concave mirror, the reflected light rays will converge to a single point that is the focus. Concave mirrors are a bit tricky because they can form a variety of different images. It can be inverted, so upside down or upright. They can be magnified or diminished, so therefore it can change in size. And it can also be real or virtual, which we'll discuss what this means in a moment. The exact type of image that can be formed in a concave mirror depends on the position of the object relative to the center and focus of the concave mirror. There are a few rules that we need to understand when drawing optics. The first rule is that a parallel light ray that goes towards the mirror will be reflected in such a way so that it will pass through the focus of that mirror. The second rule is that a focal ray, which is a light ray that passes through the focus of the mirror before reaching the mirror, will be reflected in such a way so that it is parallel to the principal axis. In this diagram, the dashed line represents a principal axis, which is horizontal. So you can see that the red ray 
passes through the focus and then reflects off the concave mirror so that it becomes horizontal as well, parallel to the principal axis. The third rule is that the central ray, which is the light ray that passes through the center of the circle, which we are modeling the concave mirror as an arc of, will, not be, will be reflected so that the returning reflected light ray travels in the same direction. This is because the light ray that travels through the center will reach the mirror in the same direction as its normal. So the reflected light ray will also be reflected back in the same direction as the normal. Once we've drawn all three types of light ray, the intersection between the reflected light ray is where the image will be formed. So in this instance where the object, which is modeled as an upright arrow, is placed outside and in front of the center of the concave mirror, the image will be formed over here. Now, if you draw this correctly, you'll be able to describe the type of image correctly as well. The arrow that's formed by the intersection of these reflected light rays is upside down, so we call this inverted. And you can see that it is also smaller in size compared to the original object, so it is diminished. This image is also described as a real image because it is constructed by the intersection of reflected light rays in front of the concave mirror. This is an example of an inverted diminished real image that's produced by a concave mirror. Now, we can simply construct the image without having to draw all three types of light rays. I've only drawn the parallel light ray that will pass through the focus upon reflection and the focal light ray that will become parallel to the principal axis upon reflection. Only two light rays are required to find the intersection and therefore draw the image produced. When we move the object between the center and the focus, the image will change in its property. So first we have a parallel light ray that passes through the focus and a focal light ray that will become parallel to the principal axis. Now the intersection between the two is over here. How do we describe this? Well, this is still inverted, but now you can see that the arrow as an image is bigger than the original object, so it is magnified. And since the intersection of the image is formed in front of the concave mirror, it is known as a real image. In concave mirrors, when the object is placed between the focus and the mirror, something interesting happens. Now we can see when we draw the two light rays, the parallel light ray will again pass through the focus, shown in black. But because the object is now in front of the focus, we cannot draw a focal ray anymore because the light ray will not pass through the focus as it is already past the focus. So in this instance, we need to draw a central ray, a light ray that would pass through the center of the circle. By doing this, we can also see the two reflected light rays will not intersect as they diverge in front of the concave mirror. So we need to extrapolate the two reflected light rays behind the concave mirror using dashed lines to see where they intersect. The intersection here produces an image that's upright, bigger than the original object, so it is magnified. But because the intersection that was used to produce this image is now behind the concave mirror, this is no longer a real image. We describe this as a virtual image. So you can see that for concave mirrors, the position of the object is very important. To start with, when the object is in front of the center, the image form is inverted, diminished, and is a real image. As it approaches the mirror and is placed between the center and the focus, the image is still inverted, but now becomes magnified, and it is still a real image. When an object is between the focus and right in front of the concave mirror, the object is upright, no longer inverted, it is magnified, and it is a virtual image. Let's go through convex mirrors. So convex mirrors are the ones that bulge outward. These mirrors are known as diverging mirrors because when the light rays reaches a convex mirror, the reflected light rays are all diverging. They travel away from each other. The implication of this diverging mirror is that we will never be able to draw reflected light rays that intersect in front of the convex mirror because they're diverging. 
So what this means is we always have to extrapolate the reflected light rays using dash lines behind the convex mirror to find where they intersect and therefore be able to draw the image. Because the intersection is always behind the convex mirror, the image is always virtual. And much more simple than concave mirrors, the image form in a convex mirror will always be upright and always be diminished in size compared to the original object. So here I've drawn a parallel light ray that will be reflected so that it will pass through the focus. But for the convex mirror, remember that the focus is behind the convex mirror. So that's why the reflected light ray is going this way so that when we extrapolate it behind the mirror, it will pass through the focus. The red light ray is what we know as a focal light ray. It will theoretically pass through the focus behind the convex mirror, so the reflected light ray will be parallel to the principal axis. Like mirrors, lenses also have principal axis, which is a straight line that's drawn through the middle of the lens. Each lens has two foci or two focuses, one in front and the other behind the lens. Typically, for convex lenses, we use the focus behind the lens as reference. And for concave lenses, we use the focus in front of the lens as reference. The focal length is the distance drawn from the focus to the center of the lens. And that is the case in both convex and concave lenses. The rules of drawing optical rays in lenses are similar as in mirrors. The first rule is that light rays which travel parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus after they undergo refraction. Light rays which pass through the center of the lens will travel straight through, unaffected by refraction. And finally, light rays which pass through the focus of the lens before going through the lens will end up traveling parallel to the principal axis after refraction. Let's look at the three rules diagrammatically. The first rule, a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis after refraction will pass through the focus of the lens. And for the concave lens, we have a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis and after refraction it will refract in such a way so that when we draw a dashed line it will pass through the focus in front of the concave lens. A light ray that passes through the center of the lens in both convex and concave lenses will simply pass straight through without any refraction. And the third rule is for any focal light rays, that is any light ray that passes through the focus of the lens, so for a convex lens, the focus here is in front of the lens. After refraction, it will become parallel to the principal axis. For a concave lens, the focal ray will theoretically pass through the focus behind the concave lens by drawing a dashed line. So after refraction, this focal light ray will become parallel to the principal axis. For convex lenses, the path of the light ray and the type of image forms depends on the position of the object relative to the focus of the convex lens. It can either produce erect or upright as well as inverted images. The image could be magnified or diminished compared to the actual size of the object and the image can also be real or virtual. If an object is placed two focal lengths away from the convex lens, we can draw a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis which will refract to pass through the focus. And we can also draw a light ray that passes through the center of the lens without any refraction. The intersection of the two light rays will help us construct the image, which will be inverted or upside down, diminished, so small in size compared to the actual object, and this will be a real image. For lenses, an image is considered as a real image if it's constructed from the intersection of light rays on the opposite side of where the object is placed. When the object is placed between the focus and two focal lengths away from the lens, we can draw a parallel light ray to the principal axis that will pass through the focus behind the convex lens. And we can again draw a central light ray that passes through the center of the lens without any refraction. The intersection between the two will produce an image on the other side of the convex lens. And this will be again inverted but this time it will be bigger or magnified and it will be again in real image. When an object is placed between the focus and the center of the convex lens, something interesting happens. 
the light ray that was parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focus as usual, and the light ray that passes through the center of the lens will pass straight through as usual. However, in this instance, you can see that the two refracted light rays are diverging. Therefore, they will never intersect on the other side of the lens. This means in order to identify and construct the image, we need to extend the two refracted light rays using dashed lines to see where they intersect in front of the lens on the same side as the object. This will give us an upright or erect image that is bigger or magnified since the image is constructed from the intersection of the two light rays on the same side as the object, it will be a virtual image. The placement of the object between the focus and the convex lens will produce a magnified image, and this is how magnifying glasses work. The rules for drawing optics and light rays that we use in convex lenses are exactly the same as concave lenses. So let's go through them again. When the object is placed more than two focal lengths away from the lens, we can draw a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis, but this time it will pass through the focus in front of the concave lens. This is because the light ray after refraction in a concave lens is actually diverging. It will travel away from the center, so therefore this light ray will never intersect with the central light ray, the light ray that passes through the center of the lens. So we need to extend the light ray backwards to meet on the same side as the object. So the intersection between the focal light ray and the central light ray is over here. And you can see that this is an erect or upright image. It is diminished in size. And because it's constructed from the intersection of light rays on the same side as the object, it is a virtual image. When we place the object between two focal lengths and one focal length away from the concave lens, we can do the same thing. We draw a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis, and this will become a diverging light ray. So we need to extend the light ray backwards to meet at the focus, and we can draw a second light ray that passes through the center of the lens, which doesn't undergo any refraction. The intersection between them is where the image is formed. In this case, it is still an upright, diminished, and virtual image. When we place the object between the focus and the lens itself, the same thing will happen. The light ray parallel to the principal axis will diverge, and so we extend it backwards, it will pass through the focus in front of the lens, and the central light ray will pass through the center of the lens unrefracted. The intersection between them is where the image is formed, and this image is again erect or upright, it is diminished in size, and again it is virtual in nature because it's formed on the same side as the object. So to summarize, in convex lenses, we have different types of image produced, depending on where the object is in relation to the focus. Concave lenses are much simpler. They always produce erect or upright, diminished and virtual images. This concludes the video on lenses. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.